Praise be Jesus Christ, today, Holy Thursday. And of course, it's a day when we uh, celebrate um, the memorial of, of the establishment of the Eucharist and the priesthood. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to talk about what is happening in the first reading when we see the um, Israelites in um, the Egyptians' captivity, when they are celebrating the first Passover. Um, and how it is related to the situation, current situation in the world, and what a lot of people, many people, um, are experiencing, how the similarities I see. Um, I remember, you know, being in a seminary and, and studying for years um, of ups and downs, of everything that was happening that was good and bad, um, but necessary in order to apparently become a priest. I remember that the great desire to um, celebrate the Mass for the first time, all kinds of, you know, imaginary things, how it was going to be, how powerful it was going to be, how beautiful it was going to be, how life-changing, etc., etc., and how even if God gave me only one time to celebrate Mass, it would have been worth it to go all those years um, and to celebrate it. And of course, that was verified later. Um, but I remember um, a little bit celebrating the first Mass visit because I was so nervous and mostly my memories are connected with the pictures that I saw of the Mass after celebrating the first Mass. Um, but it was beautiful, but I was so tense and so stressed um, that it was very difficult to experience what, what God was trying to communicate also to me. Um, and later on, many people who... Uh, were present at this Mass, told me that it was, you know, a beautiful experience, surreal for them, that they felt like the church was was floating um, and like they were lifted up to God um, during that Mass. And that made me realize how little I knew, how little I was able to, to experience because of my preoccupation with the experience itself. And now with, well, what the Lord was trying to communicate to us. And that's one of the limitations of, um, of us people, and I guess um, understanding of what priesthood is and what, what the Eucharist is all about. Uh, we tend to forget that it's the food for the journey, um, and journey means that it's going to last some time, and we are supposed to be experiencing um, uh, our relationship with Jesus and the Eucharist um, slowly, um, but regularly, um, and slowly discover what it is and how it influences our life, how it changes our perception of, of who God is, who we are. And so, um, after after all these years of celebrating the Mass, I can say that it's it's definitely um, uh, extremely powerful and at the same time extremely gentle way of, of God's working in our life. Um, I can say that um, the priesthood is is an in, incredible and powerful tool in God's hands that that He is um, given to the world. Um, and then we, the priests, are just fragile instruments of God, and yet chosen by Him to minister to His people, to take care of His people, um, and to, to bring the, the food for the journey, the Eucharist, um, and also the teachings of Jesus to, to His people. And why is it so important? Well, I wanted to use the, the example from the first reading, uh, we see Moses and Aaron are given a message from God to tell the Israelites um, to get a lamb, an unblemished lamb, um, and to prepare it in a certain way and to eat it um, in a standing position, like as if they were ready to leave. Um, because they're going to celebrate it as a Passover meal. Um, because the angel of God, the angel of death, is going to go uh, through Egypt and kill everything that is firstborn, whether animal or human being. And if they sprinkle the, the doors of their homes uh, with the blood of the lamb, 
the angel of God will pass over. Hence, Passover meal. It will not kill um, the, the firstborn in the house. And of course, it's interesting to imagine what these people were going through um, eating the, the lamb, um, being nervous about what's happening outside, maybe hearing you know cries of the people who have just lost somebody, you know, someone just died in their sight, a child, for example, firstborn, because they didn't do what God had asked them to do, or because they didn't have faith. And maybe some people who were in a house, Israelites, even though they sprinkled the um, the doors with the with the blood of the lamb, they had a firstborn at home and were wondering, with with fear probably and trembling, were wondering if if God is going to honor His own words, if He's actually going to save them, because of the uh, blood of the lamb. I think that's that's similar to, to what so many people in the world are experiencing today, people of God or people who have nothing to do with God, um, when their faith is tested, um, when our faith is tested, when we are locked in a house in a sense and outside is, you know, this virus um, that is killing people. And especially if you have someone or maybe you are of the of the group of, of the people that is um, mostly endangered. Maybe you have someone like that in your house. Maybe you are in that group and maybe you are wondering even more, is God going to deliver me? Um, am I going to be okay? These are all very um, valid and important questions. But of course, um, the Lord is trying to communicate a message to all of us, just like he was trying to communicate a message to the Israelites to submit to him, um, to trust in his saving power. And his saving power is the Eucharist, is the priesthood. And God wants us to once again hold on to him, hold on to, to the memories of our Eucharist uh, that we have received, to our communions, to the absolutions that we've received, to the... Um, act of contrition that we've learned how to do um, to him, to trust him, um, to say, Lord, I give you my life again. And because just like once you saved the Israelites uh, during the Passover, you can save us too. It's after all, um, God is in control of the world and he's asking us to simply once again just like um, thousands of years ago, people of, of Israel in Egypt saw us um, today and so Jesus with his disciples 2,000 years ago, um, glorify God, glorify God. And today I ask you especially to please remember in your prayers the priest who baptized you, the priest who prepared you for First Communion, the priest who heard your first confession or maybe recent confession, the priest who prepared you for confirmation, marriage, who witnessed your marriage, who have been part of your life, please say a prayer for him, remembering that he, we are praying for you. We remember our people. We remember that you may feel lost and nervous and scared these days. And we do ask the Lord to be merciful to you and not give you um, a trial that is beyond your strength or your ability. God is merciful. He keeps us in his hands and he wants us to, to trust him and to believe him. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless.